Uh, today we're going to do a demonstration uh, with a polymer called Polyox, and the title of the demonstration is called Polyox with a Twist. Now, poly, Polyox is actually short for polyethylene oxide, and uh, if you want to look over here on my, can we move over to the, to the chart over here, and polyethylene oxide is a polymer, which made it, it means it's made up of uh, many smaller molecules all joined together. And so every second carbon within the polyox has an oxygen. And this oxygen is going to cause some uh, very unique properties in the polyox, and that's what we're going to illustrate today. Um, polyethylene oxide is everywhere. It's in your shampoos, it's in your lotions, it's in your uh, conditioners, um, lots of different places you can find polyox. Firefighters use it to make the water uh, more uh, thick so they can shoot it up higher up into the buildings because then the stream of water won't break apart. So there's many, many, many uses for polyox. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to show you how to make it first. Uh, there's a little trick to it, not a big one, but just a little one. You need to, the polyox is so, has such a great affinity for water that if you just mix it with water straight, it just uh, clumps. And so it doesn't, it doesn't disperse very well. So we're going to use a dispersing agent. Uh, methyl alcohol, about 30 to 40 milliliters, because I want to make a, almost a full liter of this. And this has been pre-measured. Okay. And it doesn't take much polyox. It only takes about three to four grams to, to make about 600 milliliters. So it's very economical, it's very cheap, it's very inexpensive, and so 100 grams of polyox will make this, you know, you can do this demo over 30 times. So you want to swirl the Swirl the alcohol and then pour the polyox in. Okay? And I'll slow that down so you can see it a little bit. And just kind of stir it to make sure that there aren't any big chunks or lumps in there. Okay? And then we're going to add the water to it. And again, my students would be. Writing observations, questions, things of that nature. Can you want to stir it? I got a few lumps, but nothing that we can't live with. And to help thicken it a little bit, you can pour it back and forth. So I'll do it real slow. Okay, and that's rather chunky. So I made some up ahead of time that we're going to actually use for the demonstration. And it's like anything that you reheat in the microwave, like pizza or spaghetti. It's usually better the second day than it is the first. And that's, most of the time, that's very true with the polyox. So here's some that I made yesterday afternoon. And here's one of the neat things that I would show the kids at this point. It's a self-siphoning gel. So as I start to pour this and raise it up, I'm not tipping the beaker anymore, but it's running out of the beaker. Okay. Watch real closely again. I'm not tipping the beaker anymore, but it's running out of the beaker. And if I take a little bit of the polyox out, I don't know if we'll be able to see this, but it forms these really long strands. I don't know, maybe if I hold it up against my lab coat, you can, oh yeah, look at that. Looks kind of like spider webbing. Can you see that? No. All right, I'll get a little bigger. How's that? Can you see that strand coming out of there? Okay. And what's interesting about polyox, if I rub my hands together, it goes away. Okay. So I'll pass a little bit of this around in the classroom, not much, you know, because the kids get a little nuts with it, and so you have to be careful, uh, you know. And I just give them a little bit and pass it around, just tell them just to dip their finger in, put it on their fingers, and then rub it together, and then it go away, it goes away. And then I have them wash their hands at the end of the lab, and of course, when they wash their hands at the end of the lab, it comes back again, and they go, wow, my hands feel so silky. I said, well, think about all the... Uh, lotions and potions that you use on your hands and your face, uh, most of those have polyox. And so that's one of the properties of the polyox that it helps, helps those things feel uh, kind of good to your skin. 
All right. The second part of this, I made some prior to this. I'm going to add a dye called fluorescein. And you want to make sure you don't use too much dye. About half a gram is plenty. If you use more than half a gram of fluorescein, it just causes the polyox just to kind of jump all over the place and really not work too well. So uh, you want to just use a, about a half a gram of fluorescein and then make the polyox exactly the same way. And we're going to use a black light. And Janet's going to help me. Okay. And pour from the left. All right. And can we dim the lights a little bit? Okay, and I'll just start with uh, the beaker. And the further I move away from the light source, brighter, less bright. And so now I'm going to pour the polyox in from the top here. And so it looks like I'm pouring light, which is really the fun part for the students. Can we get the lights all the way down? Thank you. Oh, look at my coat. Okay. Let me switch speakers. And there you go. All right. A little more discussion about the polyox, and then we're done. Can we have the lights back up, please? Thank you. OK. So what about polyox? What causes it to have these very unique properties? Well, with all these oxygens here and with the water in there, there's a tremendous amount of hydrogen bonding. And I tell the students, it's like spaghetti. When you cook spaghetti in a pot and then you pour it in the colander and rinse it off, it's all stuck together. It's all twisted together. They've got all these long strands and they're all twisted together. So when you start to pour the polyox out of the beaker, what happens is those strands start to unwind and they slide over one another. But they still have this attraction from the hydrogen bonding. So they have this attraction for one another and so they're going to pull each other along. And so that's one of the one of the unique properties of the polyethylene oxide. Thank you.